I'm going to show you how to make a pattern um, and then we make a pattern, turn it into a swatch, and then you can use it however you choose. So it kind of, Illustrator will store your pattern design for you. Um, okay, so to start, I'm just going to make a basic um, pattern. I'm not going to get too creative here. Let's do this. And we're going to turn every other one solid. And I'm not going to, I'm going to have my pattern stay within the edges of my artboard so that we don't have to try to align the pattern. That will be an additional tutorial. Um, so we're just going to keep it simple for now. Um, sweet. Okay, so I have a pattern. And let's say that I had... I was drawing um, a cartoon and this was the pattern that I wanted to use for the clothing of one of my um, cartoon people. I want to save this pattern so that I don't have to recreate it every time that I draw my new cartoon person. So um, you want to create your pattern like I just did and then you want to click and drag so you select all the elements of your pattern and then you are going to open up your swatch panel. Um, so I have mine over on the side here, but you can also pull it up by going to window and then down to swatches. <clears throat> so I have to click and select everything again. And then you are going to click and drag this selection, your pattern, over into the swatch library until that little blue highlight box shows up. And then you're going to drop it, just release. And now you can see right here that it has created a new swatch. And what we want to do now is double click on that. It says new swatch for. We're going to double click on that and it's going to bring up our option panel. And as you can see, it's already kind of dished out our pattern here. So our original one is in the middle and then it's kind of stepped it out around the edges for us. So then if we go to our pattern options, we have a bunch of things that we can do. First we can rename it. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to name it po polka dots. And then we can change the tile type. So right now it's in a grid. Um, and I think, oh yeah, we can change the number of copies down here. Right now it's on five by five. You can do three by three and it changes it. You can do one by three, however, you can play around with that with the grid option. Or there's all these other ones, bricks. <clears throat> um, bricks by column. Go ahead and play with, around with those in your own time. And you can also change the offset by one third, one half. There's so many things you can do. Um, <clears throat> you can change the width and height. And if you want to keep those proportionate, just link them um, with the locking links here. You can change the size to the tile of your artboard. Just play around with these options because depending on what you're going to use your pattern for is how you're going to um, switch all these options or fine tune them. Um, I usually just stay with the grid and then if I want my pattern to be a large dot pattern, I'm going to have a smaller grid. I'm only going to have it three by three or even one by one. Keep it that way. Um, but if you want really tiny dot pattern, you would make your overall pattern bigger. If that makes sense, you can dim these, which I don't want to dim them. I want them at 100%. There we go. Show tile edge. Not necessarily. <clears throat> And then show swatch bounds. It's that little dotted line in there. So, yeah, play around with those. I don't want it dim though, for sure. And once you have it how you want it, you know, we can even actually put space in between our pattern too. So that's what this H and V spacing is because I don't like how these white ones are touching each other. So let's try a quarter of an inch Oh, that's a little bit too much. I'm going to do an eighth of an inch and I'm going to lock it so it's proportionate. 
point one two five. Still looks like just a hair too much, so let's do point one. Perfect. I like that. I'm happy with that. Now it's um, continuous. Other than we have two white stripes, but again for tutorial purposes, we're just going to leave it like this. It's not perfect, but it shows you how to do it. Um, so once you have all your settings how you want them, then if you look up here at the top of your artboard, you'll see that you have you can save a copy. Um, you can just save your changes as done, or you can cancel and start over. So I'm going to save this. We're going to hit done. Awesome. And then I'm going to just draw a new art panel here for us to draw on. And you can see we still have our swatch saved over here. Right now it's actually, we're using it as our stroke, which we're going to change. So now if I was going to draw, let's just make a little person here very quickly. Um, I'm going to give it just a little bit of depth. And I'm going to do a dress. There. It's my little cartoon with a dress and I don't want to stroke. I want to fill her dress with our new pattern. So I'm going to go over to my swatch panel and I'm going to have my the object that I want to fill. I'm going to have that selected. Then I'm going to hit my swatch pattern over here, polka dots. And there we go. It fills her dress with the pattern that we just created. So I'm also going to put a black stroke on this. Stroke. Doo -doo -doo. Perfect. Maybe round out that stroke. So you can see that pattern, there's endless possibilities when you have a custom pattern. And if you just take the extra little amount of time at the very beginning um, to create and save your pattern, it's going to save you a lot of headache and a lot of time down the road. So um, hopefully this was fun. And then the next follow-up tutorial to this one will be how to um, make a pattern um, that extends off your artboard and how to make it match up so that you don't have to always have it line up um, exactly. So we, I'm going to work on fine-tuning that skill and then I will be able to teach it to you. So stay tuned. Have a good week everyone.